Hmm. I'm having a hard time getting it up to your face. Oh, there it is. Good. Okay. I can sit this. That's better. Oh, that's so much better. Mm. Okay, that's very good. Okay, here we are with Christian Carrion, who was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film for your last movie. Yep. It was only your second film, Christian, called uh, Merry Christmas, Joyeux Noël in France. Yes. Your new film, your third film only, yes. is a massive film about a true-life espionage case that I've never heard of before. You're not the only one. How has this been secret so long? It, it's uh, one of the contributing factors in the fall of the Soviet Union. It involves President Reagan, the Premier of France, uh, Francois Mitterrand, a KGB colonel, and a French uh, engineer in Moscow who was a courier for all of this, this stuff. How did, it, how did it happen that this was so secret for so long? It's a bit... It's an amazing story, true story, but uh, very secret in fact, because you can imagine that in Russia no one knows the story, the story because the KGB um, decided uh, to kill the memory of the story. So it's a forbidden story. And nowadays uh, it's impossible to make a release of a movie in, the, in Russia. It uh, is. Yes. This movie will never be seen in never, Russia. Never, never. Even with glass nose. No, there is no glass note anymore. Okay. And let's be serious. And they don't want to see the movie, and no one will see it in Moscow. Now, what about uh, the idea of making this film in English? I understand originally it was going to be a project that was made in America, mm. and that idea was abandoned. This film is in French and in Russian, primar primarily with English by President Reagan, played by beautifully played by Fred Ward. Thank you for him. Yes, because uh, like you know. Merry Christmas, my previous movie, I wanted to respect the three languages, uh, German, French, and Scottish. Okay. It's not exactly English. And uh, for Farewell, I wanted to, to believe in the story, I mean, to listen to François Mitterrand only speaking French, like every French president I need. Ronald Reagan, of course, is speaking in English, and in Moscow, everybody is speaking in Russian. Okay. So it makes sense, you know, for me to respect the three languages. Well, um, does it hurt the box office potential for a movie like this then? Would, I mean, Luc Besson has been making French films in English for many years now, and he says he does it because of the international market. Yes, we, are, we disagree. <laughs> Not we disagree, but well, when you have just one language, you can imagine to dub it, maybe. But w when you have three languages, and when you understand in the story that the difference of the languages makes sense to the story itself, for example, the Russian guy and the French guy, the Russian always want to speak in, in French because he loves French culture. And the French guy thinks he doesn't speak very well in French and ask him to speak in Russian because he understands very well Russian. So, speaking in the foreign language makes sense to the story. That's why I want first to respect the story, and second to think about the audience say, yes, of course, but not first. Now, you have cast two famous directors in your lead roles. Ami Amir Kusturica is Serbian. Yeah. And he is uh, the man uh, famous for Underground, Black Cat, White Cat. Uh, there's a couple of other early films that were shown yeah, at Cannes. Yeah. Uh, and I understand he plays the KGB colonel because Nikita Mikhailkov, one of Russia's great Oscar-winning filmmakers, uh, backed out. He was afraid to play this role. Not exactly. I went to Moscow, I met Nikita, and I proposed to him to play Farewell. And he was very enthusiastic. Really. Until... Until, until the fact I discovered it would not be possible for him to be an actor for me because he was directing a huge movie, one year of shooting, a kind of Burned by the Sun 2, and I said to him, look at your schedule, you will not be able to play for me. And he said, okay, you're right, but I want to help you to make this movie. It's important. Let me help you to find another Russian actor. And we found another one, very good. Sergei Makovetsky, a very great actor. And uh, so we went to Paris to start the preparation of a movie. 
and one night this actor uh, received a call from the Russian ambassador living in Paris and this guy called the actor on his cell phone and said Sergei you are an amazing actor and the Russian people they love you but the Russian people they will never understand why you decided to shoot in a French movie to defend a traitor the bullshit it would not be good for your career now, Christian, in the production notes, your producer, Christoph Rossignol. Rossignol, says that story about Nikita Mikhailkov, that he was set to do the movie until someone called him up and told him, you cannot play this part. Uh, who is being presented as a hero, this Russian spy, when in Russia this man is looked upon as a horrible traitor. And of course he is executed, we think. His body has never been found, there's never been a death certificate, but he is the uh, uh, persona non grata. So who is telling the real story? No, he made a mistake. I mean, the, the, the Russian ambassador, who is now the Minister of Culture. Oh, okay. So a great friend of mine, of course. Uh, didn't call Nikita personally, told the actor. Okay. So after I called Nikita, myself, and I said, Nikita, an ambassador calling an actor, maybe in North Korea, I can understand, but you are telling me about a new Russia. It's not a new Russia. It's always the same fucking Russia. Stalin Russia. And he said, no, I can't believe it. I know the Russian ambassador personally, because when we make um, Putin's birthday, we are 10 at home, and he's with us. Well, you know, those sirens you hear, Christian, right now, we're in Times Square at an office here, they're really the KGB coming to get you uh, for making this movie. So, you found me. Yes. So, what about uh, Guillaume Canet? His movie, Tell No One, uh, was one of the great surprise successes about two years ago in the United States. A huge French hit, uh, a great murder mystery, uh, and uh, it was his only his second film as a director. Amazing. Isn't it how loud it can be when we're here in sealed windows in Times Square? Yeah, but Guillaume is a very good friend of mine. He was in Merry Christmas. He was uh, playing a French lieutenant, and I wanted to make another movie with him. That's why he is in Farewell. And you know why now Emir was in the movie? Because no Russian actor except <laughs> to play Farewell. Now, one of the notes, uh, Guillaume said that uh, Emir was uh, uh, sort of a law unto himself, and it took a little bit for him to get used to. Yeah. Uh, what is Emir Kusturica like, this uh, vibrant free spirit to direct? I mean, since he is the director himself... Yes, but he was not a director on the, on the set, you know, he was just, as he said, a poor actor. Okay. Poor, why? Because he has to play in two foreign languages. Okay. He learned Russian when he was a Yugoslavian pupil, but he forget everything. And he understands very well English, uh, French, I mean, but he doesn't speak very well. Okay. So speaking, playing in French and in Russian was a nightmare for him. So he... He spent a lot of time to try to less to learn the lines, only learn the lines, and then act. But I was very touched by the very beginning. It was a nightmare, to be honest, because he didn't play, he didn't know how to play. He was playing with a very uh, professional actor. I mean, Guillaume, and Guillaume was depressed to play with such an amateur. And, but after weeks, something starts between the two guys. Final question. How accurate is this movie to the facts of the farewell case? We know everything about what happened uh, between the two presidents, for example. French, François Mitterrand, and Ronald Reagan. So everything is real in the movie. We know a lot of things about what happened in Moscow. We, we don't know everything. There is a kind of legend around farewell, and I love this. It's not a documentary.